Hello Grade 8 Math students, we are now on Week 6, Quarter 3 of Mathematics 8. I am your teacher for today, Teacher Dan. Today, I will be discussing how to prove that two triangles are congruent. Okay, in this lesson, we are expected to, number 1, use the different congruence postulate, ASA, SAS, SSS, to prove congruence between two triangles. Number 2, determine the appropriate properties of equality and congruence to justify the given statements. Let us have a review first. We are to tell whether the triangles are congruent by SAS, ASA, or SSS congruence postulate. In number 1 figure, as you can see, it is similarly marked. And based on the given markings, what are the congruent parts? So we have angle G congruent to angle A, Side GD congruent to side AD and angle GDN congruent to angle ADN. So, what part of the triangle are congruent? We have an angle, an included side, and an angle. So, these two triangles are congruent by ASA congruence postulate. Okay, for number two, what are the congruent parts of these two triangles? We have segment PI congruent to segment PO, segment CI congruent to segment CO, and segment PC congruent to segment PC. So what parts of the triangle are congruent? We have a side, another side, and another side. So, we can say that these two triangles are congruent under SSS congruence postulate. And for number 3 figure, what are the congruent parts? So, we have segment XC congruent to segment UC, segment HC congruent to segment NC, and angle XCN congruent to angle UCH. So what parts of the triangle are congruent? So we have a side, an included angle, and a side. So we can say that these two triangles are congruent by SAS congruence postulate. For the second part of our review, we are asked to determine what additional pair of corresponding parts must be congruent to prove that the two triangles are congruent using the indicated congruence postulate. So here's the figure. So, as you can see, it is indicated that these two triangles are congruent under SSS congruence postulate. So, based on the given markings, the congruent parts are segment ST congruent to segment BT, segment SE congruent to segment BE. Okay, what we need here is another pair of sides or congruent sides. So, we will have segment ET congruent to segment ET. Okay, so that these two triangles are congruent under SSS congruence postulate. Okay, for the next figure, as you can see, it is indicated that it is congruent under SAS congruence postulate. Okay, based on the given figure, the congruent parts are segment IK congruent to segment ED, angle IKD congruent to angle EDK. So what we need here is another pair of congruent side. So we can have 
segment DK congruent to segment DK. Okay, let us mark segment DK congruent to segment DK. Okay, having segment DK congruent to segment DK, we can now say that these two triangles are congruent under SAS congruence postulate. And then for the last number, we have as a congruence postulate. The figure is congruent under as a congruence postulate. So based on the given markings, the congruent parts are angle LOE congruent to angle VOE. And then we have angle LEO congruent to angle VEO. What we need here is another pair of congruent sides. So we have side OE congruent to side OE. Okay, let us now mark side OE congruent to side OE. Having side OE congruent to side OE, we can say that these two triangles are congruent under ASA congruence postulate. Okay? Let us have this activity. It is given that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. ND is the midpoint of segment AB. We are going to prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD. We will be using a two-column proof here, where we will write the statements in the first column and the reason for every statement in the second column. For the first statement, we can always write what is given. And of course, the reason for writing such statement because it is already given. Let us start. We know that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. Okay, let us mark. The reason for this is given. We also know that D is the midpoint of segment AB. And it is also given. Now, what else can we draw from D is the midpoint of segment AB? If D is the midpoint, that means that segment AD is congruent to segment BD. Segment AD is congruent to segment BD. And the reason for that is definition of midpoint. Midpoint divides a segment into two congruent parts. Then let us think what else are congruent. From our previous statements, segment AC congruent to segment BC, D is the midpoint of segment AB, segment AD congruent to segment BD, we only need another pair of corresponding congruent parts so that we can say these two triangles are congruent. It's either a pair of angles or another pair of sides. If we write angle A congruent to angle B, there seems to be no reason for saying such. But if we take a look at the sides, we can clearly see that segment we can clearly see that segment CD is congruent to segment CD. by reflexive property. Okay, let us mark. Segment CD congruent to segment CD. Okay. Having the three corresponding sides that are congruent, we can now prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD by SSS congruence postulate. In the figure, we are given that segment AC and segment DF bisect each other at E. 
We are now to prove that triangle DEA is congruent to triangle FEC. Let us use the two-column proof again. Like what we said a while ago, our first statement can be taken from the given. So we have segment AC and segment DF bisect each other at E. The reason, of course, is given. If segment AC and segment DF bisect each other, then we can say that segment DE is congruent to segment EF. Segment AE is congruent to segment EC. And the reason for that is definition of bisector. So let us now mark segment DE congruent to segment EF. Segment AE congruent to segment EC. What we need now is another pair of congruent sides or pair of congruent angles. Looking at the figure, we can say that angle DEA is congruent to angle FEC. Because they are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So the reason for this is definition of vertical angles. So let us now mark. So DEA, angle DEA or this angle, congruent to angle FEC or this angle. Having this additional pair of congruent parts, we have now proven that triangle DEA is congruent to triangle FEC by SAS congruence postulate. And for our summary, the different congruence postulates, ASA, SAS, and SSS, as well as the properties of equality and congruence, other postulates, and theorems previously proven will help you in proving triangle congruence. And for your assignment, you are given angle 1 congruent to angle 2, segment KR congruent to segment PR, and then you are asked to prove triangle KRM congruent to triangle PRO. So this is the figure. So you are to write a two-column proof, just like what we did in our activity. Okay? Thank you and God bless. Hope you learned something.